This week we explore the camera lens blur effect and the channels panel to create realistic backdrops for chroma keying. Adorama TV presents DSLR Video Skills, where you'll learn all about photography and videography. Here's your host, Rich Harrington. Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this episode of DSLR Video Skills. Today, we're going to talk about making backdrops for green screen, and I'm going to focus on photographic backdrops. Now, you might be thinking, well, just color correct the picture. It's ready to go. Well, there's a little bit more to it than that, and that's because a lot of times when we have a photo, the depth of field isn't right for the green screen. We might have the focal point in the wrong part of the image, or the image just might be too in focus and it looks distracting when it's composited with the video. So I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and clean up these backdrops using Adobe Photoshop, and I'll even use the original green screen clip as a quick reference. Let's explore the workflow. So I'm in Adobe Bridge, and I have four different photos that I want to mix with my green screen subject. Let's go ahead and select the four photos, and we'll double click to open them. In this case, they're all raw files. These pictures are all different exposures, and they're not exactly right for use with the video. Now this one's probably the closest, where we have a nice shallow depth of field, and we have our subject here that's going to be composited in front. However, the trees are just a little bit too in focus. Now I'm going to play with this a little bit, and I could play right here with Camera Raw and put a little bit of negative clarity in, and that kind of defocuses. That's not bad. Or I could bring it back up. I actually think I'm going to put some clarity in, and then I'll defocus over in post. What I do want to do, however, is knock the exposure down a little bit, particularly in the highlight areas, so they're not so bright. That's looking pretty good. We'll pull the whites down a little bit as well. And if I toggle the before and after, that's looking a little bit more like a background. Let's check our next one here. Not too bad. I'll click Auto to get a base level adjustment. And then we're going to really pull down those highlights and the whites and knock the overall exposure down a bit. That's good. Take a look at our window here. Same idea. It's looking pretty good. And our last image here, let's get a proper balance. Now that brings out the rocks, but the sky's blown out. So I really need to pull those back down and find a balance here with exposure using the shadows and the highlights to get a proper exposure. All right, I'll select all four images and I'm going to make sure that they open up. Have the option down here to bring them in as smart objects, which is good for flexibility. And we're going to hand those off to Photoshop. Once in Photoshop, I'm going to selectively adjust the depth of field using the camera lens blur effect. This allows me to essentially use a depth map to define what's close to the camera and what's far away. I'm also going to size them to what I need for use with the video file. I'm going to change the canvas size to match what I need for video. So we'll switch this here to pixels, and I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080. And click OK. Photoshop warns me it's going to crop out some material. I say that's fine. Click Proceed. And now I can use the free transform command, Control or Command T, and I'll just hold down the Shift key to adjust. And I'm just going to frame this how I want. Now the good news is, is it's a smart object. So smart objects allow you to scale things, and you can take this all the way down, ridiculously small. And then later on, if you were to re-invoke Free Transform, all the resolution is still inside that picture there, so you can recover it. You can also do things like flipping, if needed, to change the orientation. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and grab my video file and put it over as a point of reference. Let's just grab my movie, which can now open up right into the regular version of Photoshop CS6. And I'm just going to use a reference frame here, not the whole movie, to check. Select all, and we'll choose copy. Great. Let's just paste that in. We'll put it on each dock. 
And you see the cool thing is, is that all those photos, until they've been sized, have a lot more resolution than we need. All right, let's just knock that out. Quick selection tool. And I'll just reverse that and add a mask. Now, this is just for reference. This isn't our final key, but we're using this to help us choose how we position the photo. So I'll press Command-T. I'm going to move that over a little bit. I don't want to see as much of the trees. There we go. Let's not have the pole growing out of the back of his head. Okay, so now that I've got it sized, I'll just duplicate that. And I need to rasterize it so I could run the blur. The camera lens blur is not available for smart objects. So this allows me to go ahead and just defocus things a bit more naturally. I'm going to just turn that up a bit. And you see how the tree starts to look like it's softer focus, and it's a little further away. Click OK, and it updates. And that looks a lot better. See the difference between the two? We now have the tree out of focus, and it looks like it's behind him. All right, let's go and do the other ones real quick. I'm going to load that selection and choose Image Crop. That's great. I still have the smart object in the background, so I can size this as needed. Control T for free transform. And we're just going to adjust this to get a backdrop that we want. That looks pretty good. Got a sense of perspective there. And here's my subject in front. And let's start to knock things out a bit. There we go. Select inverse. Apply the mask. Again, this is just a reference key for purposes of the backdrop. Now, I want to make a alpha channel to decide what's in focus and what's out. So I'm going to come over here to Channels and make a new channel. And essentially now, I have to start painting. So with the Gradient tool, I've got my black to white gradient, and I'm just going to draw. And notice there, I could start to create what's in focus and what's out. So we're just drawing to define a line. That works pretty well there. And you see we've got some depth. And I'm going to go ahead and combine this here. So let's just simply put this in a mode that's going to lay on top. Using the gradient tool in screen mode, we'll add the values up. And we'll just go ahead and draw a line there. And if we look at just the alpha channel, you see we're starting to create a depth area. Now, you could paint right on this if you want. I could just select it here and with my paintbrush start to paint in the sky, saying, you know what, don't affect that area of the sky up there. I'll just paint that in with some black. And this allows you to create some depth of field. Now, you could refine this, but essentially you're getting a little bit of a mat that you're going to work with to define what's in focus and what's out of focus. Once you have that, you can turn the alpha channel off. We'll duplicate our layer rasterize it. All right, that looks good. I'm ready to start to play with the depth of field. I am going to go ahead and crop this image, and I'll invoke the lens blur command. And let's use that alpha channel. Now, when I've done that, you see it's played with what's in focus and out of focus. I'm just going to invert that. And what I've done is I've got the bricks in the foreground in focus while things further away are falling out of focus. Click OK and it updates. And what we just did there was created a natural fall off for things in the background. And that's really cool with the camera lens blur, how you can do that. All right, let's finish this out. Control click to load, image crop. And this one's going to be real simple. We'll just recompose the background here a bit. Place our subject over, using the quick selection tool there, knock it out. And remember, you always have the ability, if you want to, to just select a layer, make an empty layer, and grab the very versatile blur tool. Check the sample all layers button, and now you could just paint by hand. And I could defocus those things that are in the backdrop that I want to. That way, even though the camera's depth of field was more than I wanted, 
I can knock those areas down by hand by just painting. And you'll see there that we could toggle those off and on and knock them down. I'll also darken them a bit using the burn tool. And you see there we could pull things down a bit. Now this is all tweaking by hand. I think that's pretty good. We'll select those and just merge them together and take advantage of the lens blur a bit. And we'll just knock that back a bit. Looks good. And we'll do our last one here. I'm just going to blur this before I size it. We'll make the alpha channel. And what I'm going to do here instead is do this based on an individual channel. So I'll duplicate this. There we go. Press Control L for levels. And what I want to do is create an area in the rocks that's really dark and make the sky really bright. There we go. And this is going to create the depth map. That looks pretty good there. Click OK. Grab my paintbrush and we're just going to paint with black to make these staircases dark. There we go. We have our selection by control clicking on it. I'll inverse it and you see that the, just the black area is selected. And what I'm going to do is grab that gradient tool again and do a little gradient here. We're going to go in this case with the normal gradient, but instead of black to white, we're going to go black and take that down to a lighter gray. That looks good. Let's go ahead and draw that in. There we go. So the white area is not going to be blurred. That's the sky. The rocks here are going to be slightly blurred. And this area, which is further away, is going to be most blurred, hence black. All right, I'll just rename that alpha channel so it's easier. We'll call it depth. Turn on the RGB channels. And let's duplicate our layer here and process it. Need to rasterize it. And we can do that lens blur. Use the alpha channel. Good. Let's crank that up a bit. And I really like how that's working. Notice that these rocks closer are in focus while this area is falling off. I could play with the focus distance slider here. And I like how the sky is remaining OK. These rocks have gone soft, but the closer rocks are in focus. If I toggle that off and on, you see that's pretty believable. All right, looks good. I'll click OK. It's going to run the filter. Turn on our main layer. Let's go ahead and size that layer. Control-T for free transform. It's pretty good there. I'll knock out the transparency. Good. Let's crop it. And we'll zoom that up to take a look. And I like that. We've got an in-focus area with the rocks falling out of focus behind our subject. Pretty deep there today. And some of you said you wanted to go deeper with some tougher episodes. Well, that's using the camera lens blur effect inside of Photoshop and making custom depth mats. It takes some time, but it really comes in handy when you want a key. And I think you'll find that you could use this on stock photos as well as your own images. Just a quick piece of production advice, if you are shooting a photo for a background plate, you might want to just have somebody step in temporarily, set the focus on them like they were the subject for the key, and then have them step out of the frame. That would give you that natural blurring in camera and cut down on some post-production techniques. All right, pretty straightforward stuff. If you head on over to the Adorama Learning Center, you'll actually find some tutorials we've done there on keying, both using Final Cut Pro and Adobe. And I think that that will give you some ideas on how to put all these pieces together. 
Thanks again for watching. My name is Rich Harrington for DSLR Video Skills, and I invite you to head on over to Adorama.com where there's a ton of great resources. If you'd like to explore what sort of gear is useful for a keying shoot, we've got some links up here, and this will help you with that production process. And of course, feel free to take a look at some of the great tools inside Adobe Photoshop to create those background images. Thanks for joining us. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.